Okay, today we have a video from a Torito copying plagiarism and stealing in the VTuber community. Now, we've definitely seen instances of this happening. I mean, this happens in, like, you know, the entire content creating sphere, not just content creating, you know, and and creative mediums in general. So, uh, yeah, let's let's check this out and let's uh see uh the discussion of copying plagiarism and stealing within the VTuber community. Copying. We've all probably done it at some point in our lives. Right. Looking over yep. someone else's yep. answers on a mm. test. Oh, oh, you're cheating. Repeating mm. what your friend says to piss them off. Oh. <laughs> Or mimicking the yep. popular memes and trends you see online. Classic, In most classic. cases, copying is nothing too problematic, unless it's school I'd advise you to actually get your education. But these are more personal or fun Me making the entire friend when it comes to profiting. What say? Actually, get your education. But these me are me making the entire friend group laugh with jokes I stole from other people. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, basically, if I have to come up with a joke, I'm fucking googling that shit. I'm dumb as fuck, okay? More personal or fun situations. When it comes to profiting from copying in business and media... He copied my whole f***ing flow! Oh, word for word! Oh, word for shit. Oh. It has far more problems. Yeah. There's a well-known dilemma in the content space of YouTubers copying oh. other YouTubers, stealing other people's yep. ideas and styles, mm -hmm. taking others' mm -hmm. content for their own benefit, mm -hmm. or mimicking mm -hmm. an entire creator's personality. These acts are seen as shameful. Rightfully, and mm. usually get called out in mass. But there's a community where copying creates a far more controversial dilemma. Oh. YouTubers, virtual entertainers who use animated avatars for content instead of their go-to faces is a vast industry built around artistic creativity. But as an artistic industry, people have many principles mm. around what art entails. People value not just good content, they value individuality mm. and originality. And with thousands upon thousands of VTubers yep. that see mm. and perceive each other, and a lot of people wanting to do what works to get popular, things, whether intentionally or unintentionally, begin to overlap. There's a lot of drama surrounding copying, plagiarism, mm. and stealing. The we, we need to make the, the emphasis first to remember that there is a difference between inspiration and copying, right? Because I think that a lot of the time, you know, like within the, the creating speed, speed, um sphere, like even like face cam craze, you know, you can kind of like be like, oh, you know, you kind of act like this stream or that stream. It's kind of just about when you start off, it's like you kind of get inferenced or even unconsciously inferenced, I think, by the people you kind of watch and you kind of take things from those people as inspiration until you find, you know, your own sound, your own sort of personality. And it's the same thing sort of like with, um, you know, with VTubers in the sense of like when you're making like a model, it's like, oh, okay. Um, because VTuber, VTubing is already, you know, like anime adjacent already. So it's kind of like, oh, you know, I have my favorite anime characters or, you know, you have your favorite VTubers and you sort of, obviously you take inspiration from them to then create something of your own. And, and that's obviously the distinction between copying and being inspired because being inspired is fine because you're you're getting inspired by something or somebody and then you're making you're using that as a base or a leverage to then create something of your own obviously there is a fine line until you get to the point of copying because it makes sense inherently when you know you see these big vtubers and you're like oh you know i want to take some inspiration from their model because you know i want to be a big vtuber obviously um they emphasize on that being a, a good content creator being a big vtuber being a good vtuber is not about the model to a certain extent having a good model can help but it's not going to just automatically give you viewership by having a good model that is not how that works um you know paying like i don't know ten thousand dollars on a model you you maybe I don't know to a certain extent you can pay to win in some regards, but yeah, paying to win does not just automatically give you a career. No.
VTuber is harassed for having similar assets to others, a VTuber whose incessant imitations of one popular VTuber led to industry-wide chaos, or a VTuber profiting thousands uh, off of a right they up, never no. owned. It is a wild dilemma, and I feel like yapping again. But before we get into that, I need to make something heavily clear. Do not harass, attack, yeah, mm -hmm, or dig into anyone mm -hmm. mentioned in this video. They'll be on some weird shit. So, let's talk about it. Hey, yo, it's Delano, that fallen angel kicked out of heaven. Get some snacks, get some water, get your friend's homework answers. Hey, let's get on the hey. video. I know, I know you like my style. That's a pretty looking pretty while I crack a smile. Let's fall back a couple of years. Enter the late 2010s. With the rise of Kazuna Ai, the Four mm. Heavenly Kings, and agencies like Hall Life and Niji What's the Four Heavenly Kings? They dominated I'm... the market over everybody. VTubing became an established Japanese industry. However, in 2020, companies would venture to the West to mm. capture that untapped English speaking market. Hall Life Small made the idea. First to jump at that opportunity. And right from these VTubers' debut, plus lockdown forcing everyone online, oh. the VTubing Golden Age began, bringing millions and millions of more fans mm -hmm. to the media. Mm -hmm. But it didn't just leave an impact on the viewers, no, no, no. The growth of VTubers worldwide led tens of thousands to see these VTubers say, I want to do that too, and jump into the growing right. industry mm -hmm. as virtual performers, either by auditioning and joining a VTuber yep. agency or taking the path as an independent creator. Mm -hmm. So enter person A, who wants to become a popular VTuber. Person A knows all what it means to be a successful VTuber. Compared Bad. to typical content creation, this shit's all hella new and many people don't know what works. Right. But these VTubers over here are blowing up and holding these audiences well with their personality, character mm. design, voice, mm. and style of content. Light bulb. I think I'm about to steal. A lot of aspiring VTubers would use popular VTubers as inspiration. Yeah, Others right. would imitate the attributes that were best received in the market. And some would just copy what's trending. No. Gargur is known for her archetype, voice, and demeanor. Countless VTubers with the same concept. Nyanas grew in popularity and she had a pink cat avatar. Wow, what a coincidence. Oh. I wanted to be a cute cat girl too. And they all are fucking pink. Oh my God. song's popular and people are covering it. Oh. You know that one anime meme Was that it VTubers that started, that made King popular? I don't know, but I mean, to be fair, I don't think that, I think there's an inherent difference between like, you know, copying, I said individual, like say like the Gargora thing, like that inherently is copying because it's like, that's a certain like character trait or, or personality trait a particular streamer has. And then you doing the same thing, that's imitation. But I think that, you know, seeing people covering King and seeing King being popular and that becoming a trend. And then you're like, oh, I see that this song being covered is popular. So I'm also going to cover that. I don't see that as copying. I see that more of, yeah, jumping on a trend, you know, and I don't really think jumping on a trend is a bad thing or I don't think that's taking anything away from anybody or, you know, because in inherently I think that when it's like stealing or when it's plagiarism, it is harming somebody else because you are taking something away from somebody else, if that makes sense. But I don't think, you know, doing a, a trend on a trendy topic because that's with every form of like content creation with TikTok, with YouTube, with anything. I don't think that's taking away from anybody. So I think that, you know, um, covering a song is, is fine to me. Um, you can let me know what you think, but I, I think that's kind of fine. That makes fun of how repetitive or unoriginal isekai anime are. The same bland everyman protagonist, yeah. the same fantasy yep. setting, yep. the same True. conventionally attractive supporting female cast. It's not that isekai anime are that unoriginal. Sorry, I just lied to your face. <laughs> it's more that despite the isekai trope having so much potential, the market has trends. Market yeah. demand shows that consumers love those attributes previously mentioned. Yeah. And these writers, whether authentic or not, are just filling that's that a, in that's a maybe formula. a formula twist to be successful. So this applies to any type of media and entertainment, including VTubers, idol VTubers, gremlin VTubers, blue tubers, and then later male VTubers. The demand for these VTubers was high and shit was trending. It's natural for businesses yeah. to supply and market themselves to see it and then want to emulate. Like that, yeah. But despite a medium where you can be literally anything, everyone was hella similar. Sometimes mm. a bit too similar. Enter accusations of copying, plagiarism, mm. and straight up. I, I think also because VTubing is sort of like, 
you know, um, it's it's very anime. It's it's sort of like you know anime adjacent in in that sense. So I I do think that there's overlap in the sense of seeing like oh you know yeah you could be anything you want to be, but we kind of see the same kinds of um, VTubers come around and I, I do think to a certain extent that is because of you know like anime and um those sort of adjacent topics like creatures and, and fantasy you know um because of that I, I do feel like in in that sense there is that overlap where yeah there's um VTubers that kind of are just adjacent to those popular trends or, or popular topics within like anime as a medium and in like fantasy and, and in that sense. Um, and I think that that is also an element of why we kind of see overlap. Up stealing. Earlier, I mentioned the many instances of content creators copying mm -hmm. and them getting called out. However, I purposely admitted the copying accusations with far less of a basis. Are you an energetic black VTuber that loves playing video games? You're a Cory X Kenshin clone. Yeah. Do you play Minecraft but with unique challenges? You're a dream clone. Yeah. You edit your videos with reaction memes, sound effects, <gasps> and media B roll when talking about random shit. You're a degenerosity clone. Wait a minute. Wait, oh, well, there shit. are definitely people who copy these YouTubers even oh, yeah, down the to the script. Guy, yeah. Sometimes it's either a mere coincidence, a spin from inspiration, or just being a similar identity group. And in bad cases, people can get harassed or receive threats yeah. for it. So hear me out. I've seen my fair share of VTuber ripoffs, copying dramas, and people just stealing shit. Mm -hmm. Whether that's tracing, AI generation, or. An oh my god. Ripoffs, copying dramas, and people just stealing shit. Whether that's tracing. Let's just say. It's fine to reference art to improve, but that's not what this is. Uh, referencing the lines when ma ma match line for line. This is just blatant tracing. Do and be better. You can always, you can draw why trace. Oh my god. Yeah, what the fuck? AI generation. Oh, ew. The, like AI generate the model? Hey, um, I wouldn't join this raffle. The art, this artist uses AI. They use this, uh, AI, Okayu, and Mio. Oh my god, it does look, you know, that's look like a bootleg Okayu. Um, from whole life to showcase models they made in their VGen, they could still deliver models. I, I can't, honestly, I can't tell what's AI and what's not. I'm sorry. I, or I, another VTuber. I'm, I'm too stupid. Flow. I remember a VTubing app that got called out for having designs oh, that were inspired from other agencies. Oh my god, wow. Tubers. I remember when one of my mutuals, Kasin Sonobi, got his shit completely what the fuck? Ripped by an Etsy artist. Like, who is this? Who are these niggas? <laughs> VTuber copying and plagiarism drama goes literally everywhere. And we'll get into the really crazy cases of VTuber plagiarism in a bit. But first, Idol Corpse Yuko Yuri. What is crazy cases of VTuber plagiarism in a bit? But first, VTubers attacked for copying accusations. They went nowhere. Idol Corpse Yuko Yure before she, you know, Died, made a viral short where she banned the topic Gargura because people were attacking her design, voice, and mannerisms based on Gura's existence. She is a big inspiration of mine. Mm. However, I am my own individual. Mm. I am Yuka Yure, Idol Corp's ghost boogie blaster. Also, she was definitely different from Gura in another way. We don't talk about the girlfriend experience members. Oh, During oh. her first months, indie VTuber Ray Bubbles got tons of shit due to being called a ripoff of Gargura. And this got me scumming my- Really? I honestly feel like she reminds me more of Shy Lily. Am I crazy? I, I, to me, she reminds me more of like Shy Lily than Gargura. I'm not saying she's a copy of Shy Lily. I'm just saying like, I, I feel like to, to me, like- she looks more like Shiloh. I don't know. Am I crazy? I thought she looks more like Shiloh than Go to me. The Ray Bubbles got tons of shit due to being called a ripoff of Gargura. And niggas got me scumming my eyes like Mr. Krabs. She said Gura was an inspiration. Her hoodie is similar. All I see is the color. Yeah, I think that this just doesn't look she said good at all. I understand both sides. On one side, her model is absolutely gorgeous and one of my personal favorite VTuber models all time. On the other hand, she copied Gura's iconic hood. What? That's fucking stupid. Okay, pretty much one for one, which makes it understandable that people get confused or frustrated about. Okay, I'm sorry. It's a fucking hoodie. Okay, and it's also, I don't think a single element um, that is sort of like adjacent or similar m makes it an exact copy, okay? That's stupid. I think that's dumb, okay? 
inspiration her hoodie is similar all i see is the color blue i forgot when on her debut day gargura officially copyrighted hoodies and even so i don't oh. see any point harassing yeah you can't have a hoodie it. yeah not see the big difference Jody out here with her chest out then i look at gargura like Charlie, that, that's not earth right Dude, that's completely flat. That's a hundred. That's a hundred percent. Wow. Abelia during her debut month got a ton of shit for being a supposed Shy Lily clone due to. Hey y'all, come look at this. Her bangs. What? Oh my god. <laughs> Just can't wait too much. Both would a year later get 2.0s and new designs. And wow, the that's cool. Abelia that's a cool getting design. A new design was because she was tired of being constantly compared to Shy Lily. And let oh me list some God. other copying accusations I've seen. The constant cat girl VTubers compared to Nyaner's. Rini was compared to one of Nyaner's new models. Ron okay, I... Okay, I'm I'm sorry. It's it's just crazy because like nothing against Nyaner's, but inherently a cat girl is not original in the fucking slightest okay and that's not like any form of trying to attack her or anybody in any way but i'm just saying that cat girls has been a popular entity within like anime manga for so fucking long like of course there's going to be elements of maybe i don't know some way of oh there's like little similarities right but that's not a copy you know there's there is so many you know um vtubers that are like the same creature or are adjacent to like the same kind of thing because that's just how it's going to be you know but they're still different Yumi was compared to not just Nyaner's, but the white cat girl from Nekopara. Okay, oh my god. Niji Sanji's Watarai Hibari got compared to False ID and got what? some pretty rude comments because of it. We kind of got people. Are you kidding me? It's, I think it's just the. How does he look for? It's just the colors. Watarai Hibari got compared to False. It's. It, I think it, it's literally just the the colors, like nothing else. False ID and got some. So the new Niji boys just dropped. Pretty uh, rude comments because of it. We coming. That's fucking stupid. I you got don't people know. on TikTok comparing him to Genshin characters what? when he came before Genshin. <laughs> you go ask Genshin why they modeled their characters after my final. I've seen other VTubers make posts about being compared to Nina Kasaka and. Hmm. Characters after my final. I've seen other VTubers. On another note, I'd like to bring out something to all the people making fun of my design each week because I'm a copy of Nina. Damn, bro, I didn't know she copied all the generic Kasuna. Yeah, because it's like. That's what I'm saying. That's what that's what I mean by um there are like there are types of you know of of, of entities or things and of course in that sense they're going to have like like some sort of similarities, you know. It like that's just how it is. Make posts like about what being... are you gonna say? Oh, there's a cat girl VTuber and oh my god, she has cat ears. And, and she also has cat ears. What? Compared to Nina Kasaka. And I wouldn't be surprised if some demon VTubers out there got compared to Iron Man. Yeah. TLDR, whether it's coincidence or totally some inspiration. I'm not in the territory to care or even worse harass people yep. over it. And it's gotten bad to the point that VTubers have had to ban other VTubers' names just to stop oh, it from so happening. Oh, that's so stupid. But whether those allegations go anywhere or not, they don't really have any big community shaking effects. Mm. The drama fizzles out as it's from nobodies and people move on. Yeah. Unless these comparisons get the attention of bigger content creators. Yeah. In 2022, indie VTuber Shy Lily would make a grand model debut that blew her up in popularity. Something mm. noticed about Shy Lily though was her voice. What's your accent? I'm German. She had a high German accent, mm. a bit different from the stereotypical Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. accent. The voice and accent would lead a lot of viewers to compare her to then V Shoujo VTuber Vey, known for her British Polish accent. Please don't clip it, please. After incessant comments, what? replies, and comparisons on her stream, Vey would make a response about Shy Lily that would spark controversy. What? Dude, quite clueless. You're fucking quite clueless. Don't. Please don't talk about that. It's it's creepy to me, and I don't like it, and I hate it. I Actually, because when you compare stuff from four months ago, that person did not sound like me. So what? Now that they do, it's weird. So we don't talk about it. Oh. You ever just said to my double game, double game channel, bro? At that point, <laughs> I'm at a point where it's like, you wanna settle for less? Go ahead. 
Are you gonna, are you gonna own Zia? Chai Wei would of course hear of this response and ultimately wish to keep drama at a low. Yeah. She's sunned it, ignore it. I, I, I don't know. I feel like this, this kind of like accusation or like this is, this is like a, a base, like a pretty big claim to make because it's hard to verify this shit. And yes, people can just actually just have accents, you know, because it exists. And and sometimes it, it, it's true that some people do just naturally have similar sounding voices. And that's actually, that's like, that's true. Like they, they sometimes do. Um, but no, I, I just think it's like, I just think it's kind of stupid. I don't know. Like, be like, oh, this person is copying my voice. I guess unless it's like blatant, but I think it's just like a, a pretty big claim to make to like say, oh, this person's like specifically copying my voice and my accent unless it's like definitive proof. But anyway, even there was, I don't know. Would I care? I don't know if it was me. I don't really know. Honestly, but it's kind of crazy. Yeah, just ignore it. No drama, only love, exactly. We need drama. It sound like we do. We don't even sound alike. But people I don't had think they really do. I don't know. This would end up creating widespread criticism against Vey while raising Shaili up in popularity even more. Some viewers understood why Vey would be people. So I understand why Vey was annoyed by her chat. I would have, I would hate having people coming into chat playing up companies, uh, on the, uh, okay, so company comparisons, especially with subjects that I wasn't comfortable with, but to put someone down, especially in such a non-joking way for petty reasons is pretty toxic. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I understand definitely when people are constantly talking about somebody else and comparing you to somebody else. Understandably, you would get annoyed, but I think to um you know throw shade or be rude to the other person when it's not really their fault i think it's unfair and i think is pretty petty um but you know i, I can obviously understand that sympathetic way it's like yeah it, it's it's annoying it's frustrating but there's definitely better ways of how you should have handled it um and i think that you know you showing that kind of behavior when your community and your chat is bring somebody up and then you respond in like a toxic way in a toxic sense i think that is also probably encouraging kind of you know behaviors of people to continue that oh you know shy louis i can't be shy louis hobby you know, you're you're pretend you're you're pushing that and i think that that is not fair i just think that the response in the way of um responding to it wasn't good no it's not just like i think you just always just stay out of drama like it's just petty it's just kind of stupid like it's just unnecessary I don't know. Well done to Lily for handling it so well. She had every right to clap back, but decided to take the high road and not piggyback on the drama. It honestly made me like her even more. It's I know it's it is it, it does feel like sometimes like high school shit. It's, it's stupid. About the constant comments about the subject, as that definitely fucks with your mental, but putting down Shy Lily was not the way of dealing yeah. with it. Others were happy to uplift Shy Lily and saw it as a promotion of shorts. Promotion? But this drama is, is old as shit. Both of them are on good terms now, and I'm like 90% certain that things got handled prior. Yeah, that, 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 that's true. You know, um, you know, the thing is, if people have their differences, remember that those differences can be solved and can be handled with. And this was something that happened in the past. It's, it's over now, you know? Emma is old as shit. Both of them are on good terms now, and I'm like 90% certain that things got handled privately. Well, that's so again, nice. no drama frogs, yeah, don't attack no drama, rude, yep, don't do any don't of that. sound similar, but look similar? Mm. Wow. Lily, a newly debuted indie VTuber, would reveal her model on Twitter and had many people compare her to Powder, a known oh. indie VTuber. Due to color scheme, species... Oh. I, I mean, I can, I can definitely, un I can definitely see, like, I mean, I can definitely understand why people would, um, you know, make comparison. 
piece, white hair, purple horns, stuff like that. Tyler's subtweet being aware of the look like for a while now would also bring more eyes to the story. She would also post DMs from viewers mentioning the alleged look alike to her. This has a hella winded situation. I'll try to quickly summarize for how both sides feel. Lily mm. defended herself with her side. She was well aware of powder during the design process, but had her own inspirations during redesigning. Ultimately deciding, hey, I'ma do my own thing. Wanted to be a hot demon girl with white hair, favorite color purple, loved Tina uh, to reference before she didn't know Dermot as a focusing program, recognize similarities. Thing. Combos with her, Powder, and the artist happened, but despite Lily explaining her deep personal reason for choices, Powder ultimately didn't believe her, which felt crushing for Lily. Later, mm. when Powder was asked if there was anything about- Damn. Hi, Powder. I, I hope you're doing well. I saw your recent post about how featuring has taken a mental toll on you, and as someone who has been going through the same thing, I hope you can find the motivation to turn to your love content creation. I just wanted to quickly message you as I have recently started on Royalties model, and I remember mentioning showing it to you to make sure there's no similarity that could potentially make you feel uncomfortable. I have attached her whip. If there's anything that could cons that concerns you, please don't still let me know. Uh, thank you for re reaching out to me. I spoke with my OC designer and care about it. I got the feedback, their feedback on their mat on the matter. They gave me good insight and opinions about it. I think it's best if I no longer see any updates with the model design moving forward. I remember you saying you wanted to contact me in the past about it. I appreciate you following through. Mm about the work in progress that concerned her, she would cut combos. She's well aware of the designs being similar with color palette and lore name, but see both her and Powder as different personalities and wishes to continue what she loves, mm. which is streaming. Powder would push out her side. She was long involved in the situation with her own pointers. After deliberation and worries about looking like the lookalike, she ultimately decided she was not comfortable with branding similarities. Mm. And they even asked around it from both sides. But the subject of changes didn't exactly go her way. Huh. Oh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of damn text and stuff. Many things overlap behind the scene for Powder to be comfortable. And to her, them going forward without changing made her feel personally disregarded. Feeling powerless and stressed from the situation, she spoke with her designer and ultimately cut conversations for her sanity. There's a bit more, but TLDR, private convos resulted in no solution. Shit went public. And everybody's wild. Yeah, now. when... When stuff goes public, it's just ugh. But I think, I, I personally just feel like, okay, if another creator is, or like another VTuber is being like, hey, I'm personally not comfortable with this. I just think, okay, I, I understand where this other person's coming from, where it's like, you know, I, I, I like these colors. I like these elements, but it's like, you know, I just think that out of respect, um, out of not trying to start anything, I would say you probably should just change some things up or change some elements, okay? Like, at, just out of respect for the other person. There were two different points I saw. On one hand, several VTubers see their designs as expressions of themselves and are protective of it. Then why go with a design that'll get you constantly compared to someone else? Yeah. Because I'd personally avoid that. I would avoid that too, yeah. On the other hand, no one yeah. can claim a color scheme or species. Yuri doesn't own blue sea creatures or hoodies. Neanders didn't originate pink cat girls. Yeah. I can't copyright black fallen angels or my cat break jokes I use in every yeah. single video. That's, that's the thing. Because it's like when you're like... Um, demons and um, you cat girls. It's like, yeah, it's like pink. I'm sorry, but pink is a very just normal fucking color, and um, it it makes sense that there's probably somebody like, hey, I want to be a pink cat girl, you know. Um, so that is like that's the hard thing because you can't like you can't take claim of a fucking species that is known you know that is known in mythology that is n that is known in other forms of media for years and years and years um and color palette palettes aren't necessarily yours um but you know i i can i can i get it you know but it's like it kind of is like a bit of an iffy situation at times um but i personally personally i probably just would just change it just to not start shit, you know? At the end of the day, you just keep creating and let them deal with it. I couldn't care less to really pick a side, but when it comes to yeah. similarities, God, thank you for making me black. I automatically- 
seeing VTuber copy cat drama due to similarities and God, thank you for making me black. I automatically stand out in this industry of merely existing. We stand out in this space by merely existing. So that's how it should have ended, right? Oh yeah, I conveniently ignored what happened with the other powder responses. <sighs> okay, I will always say that feelings and emotions are valid. But yeah. what actions one does will get mm, them judged mm, by mm, the mass regardless mm. of them. Because to the audience, it ain't about you, it's about your message. Yeah. It's what you do with those yeah. feelings. And I do get powder's frustration here, but... How does this... What is... what is this? <laughs> Some other tweets were made. Bitterness into bitterness into bitter replies into com comments that her oh bitterness into bitterness into. I generally don't think this is how handling an issue of this nature within the VTuber community, VTuber community should be conducted. But time and time again, we're at an all-time low heart. Anyone can be a VTuber now. I'm down in the trenches, my dude. To bitter reply. Girl, this is not why you being unnecessarily mean. Humor is my coping mechanism. It doesn't make it any less malicious. Just talk shit behind closed doors. Then, I don't know, dude, I hope she never sees it so she isn't unnecessarily harassed. I tagged her so it's a little too late. She doesn't want to see it. That's fucked up. That, yeah, that is, that is fucked up. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's like when you are a content creator, when you are, like, when you have an audience, when you have a, wait, like, like you have a voice publicly, this is not how you handle shit. Um, this is going to bite you in the ass and it's going, it's showing your true colors. It, it's just not going to work out for you acting this way, being petty, um, condoning things like harassment. It's not right. It's, it's not okay. Um, and automatically, it does put you not in the best position. Like, I understand where she's coming from. I understand the frustration. But in no way, shape, or form, this is how you should be acting the situation, girl. Okay, come on, sister. Like, no, this is not okay. This is not right. Guys, in the comments that f***ed her PR into another meme. Oh my god, stop talking, please! Oh my god, up. Jesus fucking Christ! Look off Twitter! Go outside! This is what happens when you go outside! This is what happens when you're on fucking Twitter for 24 hours a day! Man. In the comments that f***ed her PR into another meme. Oh my god, stop talking! What? what? Oh my- Okay, sorry, I'm flanked. I don't- I'm not as well worded as most people in drama, so nor if you don't care. This isn't about owning anything. This is about bigger account for small account. This is a question about creativity, lack of, lack thereof. This is a question about when do consequences start being too much? It's about being oblivious to the similarities and the possible consequences of how that makes someone feel. An easily avoidable thing that went ignored when it could have been nipped in the butt early. I can't control what other people do about my feelings but I'm going to react in a negative way when I've been ignored and lied to you about a compensation. If you believe it's okay to just look like each other, then well, I don't want to understand your mindset. I want to see creativity. I want to see your uniqueness. I don't want to push the narrative that it's okay for people to be just like everyone else. Look at the bigger picture and stop focusing on one emotionally driven decision. I made. I think it's okay to criticize when you have all the information, but it's not okay to constantly uh, berate someone. I always try to keep it 100% with y'all and I don't want to half ass an apology. I'm not feeling apologetic just to please a very emotionally charged crowd on Twitter. Thank you to everyone who has reached out to me privately. I'm lucky to have y'all. There's a difference between, okay, criticizing somebody and emotionally lashing out at Twitter because you're mad at somebody. You're obviously, but like you're obviously and I'm not blaming, I'm not saying that, you know, she shouldn't be upset. It's understandable that she's upset. But you can't just emotionally lash out on Twitter. That is not what you should do. That's not healthy. And it's not going to help. Okay, it's not going to help you. Um, It puts you in a bad light. And it does not, it, it's, it's not going to fucking help, sister. Like, log off. Log the fuck off of Twitter. Go the fuck outside and touch some fucking grass, girl. I mean, honestly, I don't fucking touch grass, so I'm being hypocritical here, but Jesus fucking Christ, sister. Jesus Christ. Chill. Please, shut up! Please. Shut the fuck up! No! Shut up! Shut up! Like, shut the fuck up! Ow! 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 Honestly, that's it like- It became a- that's, Honestly, that's the thing, though, with, like, Twitter. It's like, 
this drawing like, shut the fuck up! Shut up! Shut the fuck up! It's, it's literally it's just that, like, shut the fuck up! Shut up! Like, get the fuck off Twitter! It's, it, it's, it's just dumb. It's, it's just dumb internet bullshit. If you turn your fucking computer off, and you turn your fucking internet off, it's fine. It's, it's fucking VTuber online drama, okay? Go the fuck outside for a little bit. <sighs> uh, TLDR was labeled the mean girl for the comments against the other, uh, parties. Hello, yikes situation. Oh. People got very mad at her, and we're going to move on. Similar to the Vay and Shia Lily thing, both move on. Support whoever, don't be rude or weird to either. We talked a bit about Shia Lily earlier. The Orca Cat Mix indie VTuber has a uniquely soft German accent, also loves saying the phrase womp womp. Womp womp. She grew into her hit icon in the scene. Hell, I made a video about it a while ago. So look at mm. her, and now look at this. Yeah. You copy my whole flow! And it lasted over six months. Oh my god. An indie VTuber by the name of Smo Lola would appear in late 2023. She would make shorts and clips when on November 23rd, certain comments would appear comparing her likeness to Shy Lily. Her archetype, design, phrase. And most notably, swim outfit. Small Lola would adamantly defend herself against the quote drama Shy Lily fans had unfortunately brought to her. Push back on this later. Although you could definitely see similarities, it's not enough to dictate copying yeah. her plagiarism. Yeah. So most people believe Small Lola, gave mm. her support from hate, and moved on. But when this first happened, two things stuck out to me: the names Shy Lily. Small Wompa, Lola. Wompa. But you know, it wasn't my business. Mm. On December 5th, she announced getting a 2.0 to avoid the Shy Lily allegations, and I thought, hey, with the okay. new designs, I hope shit gets better for her. Then the copying drama came up again in January. Again? Again. A weird account by the name what of Emma Sakura V2 made a tweet calling out how Small Lola's work in progress model seemed like straight up copying Shy Lily's. This model having been leaked after Small Lola showed it on her then private stream. I say weird because this account, along with two other accounts that made negative posts against Small Lola, don't even feel like real people. Oh, what? Wait, all appeared what? in late September 2023, all based what off cheap pre made Etsy models. What the fuck? All have weird chat GPT like bios and introductions, and then all hella inactive until January 15th to call out the small VTuber. Who are you, people? Similar to last time, people sided and defended her, she got some followers out of it, mm. and then I actually saw the leaked design. Um. Um. Yeah. Uh. Oh, yeah, there's, there's no. There's, there's no defending this, because, like, the thing is. Um. Even if it's the same, like, you know, it's just like a dolphin. Hey, this is a whale. There are so many, there's so many things you could do with that, you know? It's, it just looks, it's way too similar. We, we, we could visually fucking see it. Like, the hair, like, how, even, like, her ears, the tail's, like, shaped in the exact same way. Her eyes are kind of shaped the same. The thing on her, like, her outfit looks the exact same. Like, uh, besides, uh, like, a little difference, like, like but then there's the bow, there's the straps, there's, like, the thing on her neck, you know, she's got, like, the skirt on. It is, it is way too similar. Content and posting it in a fake duet ah! And then, this drama came up again in June. Oh, oh, Three back. times over six months. Back. You can guess I'm getting tired of it. Also lost the tweet where she states being compared to Shelley and said, uh, and started getting DM death threats, don't do that weird shit, that's fucked up, you don't fucking do that, you're a fucking weirdo, uh, if you do that, you're automatically in the wrong, and you need to go outside because it's honestly fucking sad that you're sitting on death threats over fucking VTuber drama, go the fuck outside, you're pathetic, ill. You're weird. But this time, the script completely changed. When the same instance happens so often with one specific person, people begin to question, how does this one person end up in the same thing so often? Mm. Once, it's a chance. Twice, it's a coincidence. Third time it happens, what is that? <laughs> it, it gotta be on you. I mean, because so the, I mean, the thing is, is, she literally made a brand new model saying that she wanted to be, um, you know, she wanted to stop being compared to Shia Lily, and then she made that. I mean, is this person a fucking genius to some extent? Maybe she is, in the sense of because you're actually getting traction and attention by being compared to Shia Lily. And I'm not saying that it's the right thing to do, because I am not saying that. But even if 
some of these people that like follow you because of it are like hate watchers. It's still attention. You know, you know what I mean? Bad press is still is still press, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Maybe she's a genius. I don't know. People notice things they previously missed from before. Way too many similarities. Way too the many. The design, the tail, Way the too ears, many. the Way outfit, too many. the fish in the mouth, the glow in the dark visual effect, the names, logos, VTuber oh hybrid mm -hmm. archetype, and especially the silhouette. Oh my god. Tell me at That's first crazy. glance you tell these two apart. I, They're the same picture. Crazy. Someone even recolored the crazy. model to look like Shy Lily. That's crazy. And then another thought appeared. Didn't she say at first nothing was similar or inspired by Lily? That she changed her design and the 2.0 to be less like her how are we still here <laughs> this time she did admit there were similarities in designs but loved her and, and let's like say this again it's okay to be inspired by somebody um but it's about using that inspiration to then make something of your own i just want to say i completely understand where some of you are coming from yes me and shyly have some similarities but that isn't a bad thing people are allowed to be similar it doesn't mean they're copycat or whatever no no, 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 no. The thing is, it's okay to have some, some similarities. Yes, but but the thing is, when there's like a, a, a hundred similarities or like ten similarities, then it's it's then that's an issue, right? Um, I love my design, and I think Lily has a beautiful design too. But to say mine is a direct ripoff of hers is false and frankly rude to both me and my amazing art mama. I'm getting a little tired of the comments and to try ease the accusations, my uh, re-debut, subathon, the top goal. Design regardless, however, saying hers is a direct ripoff of Shy Lily's is false and frankly rude. But why would you make these design choices if you wanted to move away from the yes. comparison? People started to switch sides, and then allegations came out about her voice. Some people oh. believe Smolola faked her voice in the present to sound more like that Shy is Lily, really weird. whose German accent is actually pretty damn uncommon. You guys are stuck. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think her, her um, Shia Lily's, like, British, I mean, not so British, uh, German accent is pretty unique. Like, I, I feel like it is. Got to get some more. I heard you like VTubers, and if you haven't noticed yet- Yo, that, that's fucking crazy, because it does sound like, it does sound like Shia Lily. That's, that's kind of- I happen to be <laughs> I kind of hear a soft accent in their original, so I can believe that's her real voice. Yeah. The constant other stuff didn't help her case, though. The internet saw the overabundance- uh, the, the, the thing is, um, you know, obviously, like I said before, um, it is hard, I feel like, sometimes to make that, like, connection and be like, oh, this person's copying my, like, this person's voice, but when it's, like, this model, then the voice, you know- I feel like there is way more of, um, uh, there's way more, like, evidence to, to put behind that accusation, if you know what I mean. ...of similarities, the acts of imitation, the sheer amount of coping, and the inconsistency of statements and potential lies, and it became a f***ing shitstorm. Memes upon memes and public callouts about copying and plagiarism. Even her OG artist came in like, yeah, there's a good crazy. chance he wants to be Shy Lily. Some artists made free designs to maybe help her out. She was even interviewed by VTuber Alara to give her a side, and somehow the interview made her look worse. What? But there was one thought Bruh. in my head. I was aware of this dilemma from the beginning, but majority of time i was wondering how shy lily felt experiencing all this because mm. imagine you lily over six months you wake up seeing everyone wild and now your name getting thrown around and eventually shy lily made a response to the months long drama i'm not just say it the way it is i have nothing to say leave me be i'm at a size where no matter what i say it's wrong if mm. i express mm. any amount of uncomfortableness for the lack of a better word, I'm the big bad wolf. If I pretend like it's not a big deal and don't care, I set a new standard that is mm. encouraging people to do the same. Yeah. And it's kind of disrespecting a lot of artists because yeah. it's basically like, <laughs> you know what? All the work, skill, and effort artists put out there, just f***ing steal it. Who gives a shit? <laughs> It'd be nice if people stop putting words in my mouth. I'm staying out of it for reasons. And I know my chat is not involved in it either. So if people could stop pretending like I've made any public opinions about whatever. Or that my chat is doing anything to whomever. Both of those are untrue. 
and I can prove it. That's all I wanted to say. I'm tired of that stuff being brought up. I don't like drama. Everyone who respects me knows that. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> People consider this- That is the- That is the really hard thing when you are a massive creator is that there is a magnifying glass on you and people are gunning for whatever you possibly say. And people want, and, and, and there's so many different people looking at you and they all want a different kind of response. There's different groups of people who want a response of, you can be, you know, you've been completely duh, condemning that person or, or you, not caring but then if you say you don't care but then they're like oh it's disrespectful you know there's it, it there's no winning situation that's the a hard thing um i feel like about you know say um a different thing by like oh somebody like the the speed um the speed kid that's like copying speed you know that the hard thing is because it's like well when it's like a virtual model being copied it is affecting somebody in the sense of it, it is affecting artists it's affecting maybe even um Shiley's original artist because somebody is you know possibly trying to copy their art like copy their style or um you know it, it, is it pushing forward saying oh it's okay to copy somebody's art to copy somebody's style you know, when it's like, oh, somebody is, you know, copying um, my personality, right? And I'm a face cam streamer. Yes, maybe that's bad, but inherently it's kind of like, well, that's kind of only affecting me. It's not really affecting others. Um, I, I guess you could say, oh, well, you're saying it's okay to copy other people's personalities or whatever, but I don't think it's as bad in that sense, but, um... I think that, you know, it's hard when um, being like, oh, I don't care, can af have an effect on others. Um, because when it's just something that affects just you, you can disregard that and be like, hey, I don't give a fuck. I'm doing my own thing. But when there is um, a thing of it can be affecting to others, there is that element of feeling like, oh, you have to fucking respond. And that is the issue. That's the hard thing about being a big content creator is that whatever you have to say, whatever you say, it's never enough. It's never enough for everybody. There's no perfect response because it's never going to be reciprocated or, you know, well, 100%. One of the best responses to a drama like this. And I definitely agree with but the point. I, I think that she responded very well. Lily fans? Personally. Shy Lily fans? Spreading hate and sparking drama? Do, do you know Shy Lily fans? They are way more concerned with looking up porn of their OC than... I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. This drama is so fucking cringe. I can't even browse your... Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, You're honestly kind of fucking based. Kuma, fucking Richie a fan, average Kuma, you know, yeah, I mean, kind of base, to be honest. Spreading hate around her. But where did that leave Small Lola? Small Lola would make a final response, ultimately stating she could have handled a lot of things more maturely. By her words, she never intended to hurt people or start drama, but she emphasized that she was not a victim. Hate sucks and she wanted to vent, but she could have avoided the situation. She further states that her voice is not fake. Basically, this is don't vent on Twitter. Log off. Go outside. Or, or honestly, find a friend and and vent to them privately. Right? Don't vent publicly. Don't do that. Don't vent publicly. You know, if you have friends and you have people around you, you have a support system, vent to them. Venting privately is so much more healthier than venting in a public space and then suffering the repercussions for doing that because when you are emotional, you're not thinking straight because you're obviously you're emotional, right? Um, 
fake as she previously spoke with low energy, she didn't expect a bunch of artists to give free designs when she asked for advice, and it was never her intent to engagement bait or drama farm. However, on the topic of plagiarism, she admits she took too much inspiration and apologized Way too to Shy Lily and her other artists, stating she has plans for a new redesign. Okay, has she, she made the new redesign? Leaving, then decided she would then go on an indefinite hiatus, and now she's back on Twitter under a new Abby and her account locked, and I'll respect that privacy. I okay, see Small Lily's mm. case like countless inspiring content creators out there. They want to do what works and look yeah, up to the top performers, yeah. but end up imitating aspects of them too much, mm. getting lost in the sauce, and caught for inconsistency, where whether they believe so or not, the mass will see them as the top. Yeah, because no, I, I do understand that, you know, because it's like, um, in, in the sense of when you're a stunning content creator, when, you know, you want to be successful, and it, it, it is an element, there is a thing of, there is an element, I feel like, almost an unconscious way of gaining too much inspiration but the thing is i i guess i feel like when it is a model there is a long process and there's a lot of time that goes into it but you know i don't know but um no i think what he what torito is saying is is completely fair and i agree um Copycat. Ultimately, yeah. come to your own conclusion, but yeah. don't be bullying or harassing. Yeah. That shit's lame. Don't harass anybody. Don't bully anybody. But, you know, come to your own conclusions in your own space. Um, You know, don't insult anybody. Don't, you know, bring anybody down. But the thing is, though, I think it's, like, crazy the fact that, like, with these, um, you know, instances, like, models are expensive. Like... How much money do these people have that you can just, you know, commission a model and then have it, like, be that similar and then having to basically just throw away that model because you obviously, you can't use it because of what happened and then having to get a new one. Like, I don't know, I wish I had that kind of money where I could just buy a new model and then f get a new one. I wish. I, I do wish. Miss a VTuber by the name of Ume Kaitu popped into the scene oh. showing off his model and announcing his debut for the summer of 2024. It looks kind of clean, right? It's what cute. What I told you? This VTuber design was never his own. Yoon is in trouble. A VTuber by the name of Meep Sheep VT made a call-out post showing that his VTuber directly plagiarized a design by artist Yubei. That is like directly a copy. Same hair color, same hairstyle, same scarf, same eyes, no, same flower acid. That's a, a, even a direct copy. Horns. I mean, technically you're me. No, 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 no. I'm me. Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah. I don't have nothing to do with the. Plus, with no direct mention or credit to the original person or design, it paints a bad picture. Yubei-san, the original artist, would come out and say that Ume asked him to use the original artist. Yubei-san said, No. Nope. But yet, after seeing Ume Kaito use the design regardless, Yubei-san asked to just change the floral and gold decorations. As you see, he did- What? That is fucking crazy. No, that is so fucked. That is so fucked up. Like, this artist is so fucking kind and so nice and it's so sad that they got taken advantage of and I, I feel like this person um didn't want to, like, start anything or have any drama. So, they were literally the nicest. And also, what I'm also um so mad about is if this person, like, the artist, um sort of just, like, gave up does that mean that they, like, did they get money? Did they, did they get paid for the design or not? It's, or is it just like, literally like, oh, well, they already fucking prejudiced me. So it's like, please just change this element. And, you know, it's like, damn. Ugh. But, you know, respect artists, okay? Respect them. But, I don't know, maybe, I mean, couldn't he have, I don't know, maybe try to, um find somebody like find a different artist who made something similar you know because it looks like he looks like kind of like a, a goat maybe like a goat boy like i feel like even if it's not the exact same i feel like you could have maybe found another art um piece that's sort of like similar in a sense obviously not um, a plagiarized thing, but I mean, like, a, a goat that maybe it's different, but it's, like, in the same realm, and then you ask that artist to see, um, but, 
no, like it shows a complete disregard of a t- uh, an artist's um, boundaries. Um, you're a piece of shit. It's kind of disgusting and gross for anybody to do that. Don't not do that. Um, respect artists. Respect their, um, you know, art. their art is their art, okay? You can't fucking just take their art if they say no. Didn't. Fume Kaito would make a disgusting, swift response disgusting, to the accusations, disgusting. saying that he, quote, never stated that I did not use the artwork as a reference, interesting double negative, but would rather keep the discussions with the artists, but ultimately wanting no one harassed and taking responsibility. But later, even more would be exposed. Even at the request, he kept using the original artist's design. And after this, other artists came oh out with God. their own personal experiences crazy. with Dume not being the greatest customer. Actively going against terms of service or standards to demand changes to keep it his way. After all that, bro, you know, had to deactivate. Wow. But it gets even worse. We have to factor in that- so Like I said but um, before, it's so crazy that um you would do this and then spend all that money to like get the model and everything. And then, obviously, because you're fucking stealing, you get, like, you deactivate everything. Like, you're just throwing away money. You're just throwing, what, what the fuck did you think was going to happen? You think you were going to get away with that shit? Like, I don't, I, I don't get it. I, I wish I had that money. Okay, um, to, to be completely transparent, you guys, my model is a ready-to-use model. I fucking wish I could afford to have uh, an original model of that kind of quality, you know? Fuck me. Damn. Somebody else, an entire separate studio, was the one who created this VTuber model. Do you think they knew about all this? No. Nope. They no. had their own experience. They write for transparency and accountability surrounding what was going on, especially behind oh, the scenes. Oh wait, oh wait, D wait, DG this is this is this is the studio that has that's my model, my this ready to use model. Um they write from for them. transparency and accountability surrounding what was going on, especially behind the scenes. According to them, And okay, let me just say this. I've looked because I've been honestly um interested in commissioning them for like a a, a for a uh, um original model they're like ex it's over it's expensive it's like over not as in it's like really expensive in terms of vtuber models but i just mean as in like for me it's expensive or like just in general models are expensive it's like over a thousand dollars and to spend over a thousand dollars and then like copying something is crazy like Ume had claimed the artwork as his OC or original character, and with the artist doing a Google search and finding no results, they didn't really suspect stealing. Mm, so that's, they... that's fair, yeah. Um, and it's serving its use as a profile picture course model platforms. Mm. Now move forward. Huh. But the situation didn't end there. Persistent disrespect and mistreatment that the artist the experienced fuck? from Ume compelled them to speak out. Here's what they say. Quote, he frequently breached terms of service by insisting on minutely detailed and stringent revisions under the guise of perfectionism. He oh continued to demand overly meticulous adjustments, emphasizing his critical nature toward artistic work. What? Moreover, his oh specific request God. for us to follow exactly Exactly, the head, hairstyle, and headpiece were clean indications of his intent to base his model on the mm. OG artwork. And like, when you scroll these DMs and specific messages, I'm like, what? This guy <laughs> was obsessed with that design. Gee, you already know I'm obsessed with it. Like, I get he's kind of nice, but you gotta let it go. Yeah. With all this controversy going on, DG Studio regrets the creation of the model, offers sincere apologies, mm. and would move forward to commit to verifying the origins mm. of all references. A lot of things were being said about this guy. None of them good. Oh. And then he faded away oh. from the internet. At this of course memory, he did. Never to be seen again. Yeah, plot twist, a document dropped three months later. What? Fumi Kaito would put out a doc as an apology and explanation. What? And okay, the thing is, though, what is kind of, um, you know, uh, annoying and, and crazy in the sense, um, that, like, that's with VTubing, is that the, and you, and you, oh, I can't speak, the, uh, being anonymous, right? Because basic inherently, right? Say, um, like I mean, you guys have seen my face, right? Um, I used to be a face cam creator, so essentially, it's like my name 
you know, it does have my face attached to it. Um, but when you're a face cam creator, obviously you see the face, right? You can't really, like, after you've done a terrible thing, come back and um, have people sort of, you know, think you're a different person or not know it's you. But when you're like a VTuber and you're, you're like this, right? No one really, like, no one knows who you are personally. And because of that, he can kind of just do this leave, delete his account, and then like, he could hypothetically go and commission a new model and then continue on like nothing happened. And that is kind of, sadly, the issue that is kind of like when being a VTuber, when, when being anonymous, is that you kind of really can um, get away with things sometimes. But, you know, it's kind of just how it is. October 2023, Ume found Yubei's design on Pinterest, fell in love with it, and wanted something very similar with minor changes when getting into VTubing. However, his ultimate stubbornness and wrong beliefs around owning the design, co-opting hairstyles and accessories, falsely claiming he obtained permission to use the OC as a reference, stressing exact perfection on the look, and incessant changes directed at artists breaking TOS would be his downfall. He states that he never intended to upset the people working on the model, was always willing to pay extra if necessary, but after reading experiences from the artists and people involved, he feels genuinely sorry about his actions. There are other things he mentions, like difficulties with verbal expression, dyslexia, not being a native what? speaker, dyslexia. his account due to the large hate oh, attacks and threats he received, up. and feeling like a terrible person to the point of attempting on his life. Oh after my God. taking time to rebuild himself and grasp the situation, dude, dude. he will return and take accountability and apologize to everyone. Yubei-san, DJ Studios. Okay, I underst- Okay, not- not ever trying to obviously um, downplay, you know, mental health or anything like that. But when you are making an apology for a bad action, it you know when you're all, when somebody is like, oh, you know, it had an effect on me mentally. Um, you know, I it, me being a bad person, it mentally affected me. Like, come on, dude. Like, I'm sorry, but this is not the time or place to be saying those things because it's your own fucking fault because it's based on your bad actions. And obviously, there is some sympathy towards you because obviously, yes, I do not ever want somebody to take their own life. Um, but that being said you did a terrible thing, you were a bad person, and there are so many, like, points where you could have not done the bad things that you did that caused this to happen, um, and because of that, I can't really, like, you know, it's, it's not an excuse for your actions, and when somebody, um, says these things, um, after doing something bad like this, it, it does feel like you are using it as a, a a way to defend you from your actions and it's like ugh it gives me the ick no the artist everyone he also addresses other accusations a tracing accusation from wildheart that was confirmed false and his experiences with madame mito and akira vr where he admits to requesting several different minor changes he believed everything was fine and kind of wished they'd tell him dms if the requests were disrespectful but he ultimately apologizes for hurting them and that's the gist so here's my thing remember how i said vtubing cares a lot about artistic principles yeah and they, they do you know what's a very big artistic principle don't play uh, yeah. uh, yes, and also respecting an artist's, um, you know, obviously their terms and, you know, their boundaries. It's mine. No. And that is the clearest case I have ever seen for VTuber plagiarism. There's just not an argument against it. The other behaviors, disrespecting artists, the lies. Regardless, you're just gonna have to hold that. But I'm glad he's, you know, alive and doing that yeah shit like this is heavy yeah. and no yes, matter one's course. actions or reputation no one should be able to go down that route yes 100 percent. um yeah 100 percent. no matter um somebody's actions or the bad things they've done um i would never ever you know say that they should um ha ha cause self-harm in any way or condone that and if you ever um you know send death threats to somebody or try to push somebody in that direction you're a disgusting person you're horrible that's wrong no matter what that person's done 
you are not the good person. You are not in the right for ever, ever sending like death threats or hate to somebody. It's wrong. It's disgusting. And it's never right. Never do that. Please never fucking do that ever. Always harassing and death threats are fucking unnecessary. Yeah. Though, however, he does with returning to streaming. Best of luck. But that's enough punching down on small niggas. It personally feels a bit better to punch up on those bigger. Mm. Speaking of bigger, if you're a VTuber fan, you've definitely oh, heard of the name Philly, yum. previously a VR chat streamer turned indie VTuber who blew up in popularity to her YouTube shorts, effectively becoming the fourth most popular VTuber in the world. But most notably, a lot of merch. Signed posters, shirts and hoodies, oh. YouTubes, cups, figurines and plushies. Even got her VTuber I mean, skin. The thing is, right? I think this is, this is the thing a lot of us I had no idea that this wasn't Fillion's, um, original model. I thought this was Fillion's original model. I thought this was Fillion's model. I, I genuinely think I thought that, and I think a lot of people thought that too. And featured in the racing game. Hi, this is Fillion's manager. If you want to make merch of her for conventions, go for it. My manager is me. That should put into perspective how big Fillion is. So let me tell you how big of a revelation it was to hear that she never owned the copyright Just, to her yeah, design and model. So fucked. She allegedly never paid money for the model. Wow, 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 wow. And one what the fuck? Model. What? She allegedly I'm so glad you like that you liked this model that I paid zero dollars for. I'm mean, using for free. I I honestly don't understand this in the sense of she is at a point where she's fucking making so much fucking money, okay? She she literally has a lot of money, okay? Um, And I don't know why at a certain point she, like, there's so many points of action that she could have done. Like, one, obviously, uh, commission your own model. Or go to the original artist or the, you know, the, the booth person, whatever. Try to contact them, be like, hey... Can I buy out this model? Can I buy the rights of it from you and see how that goes? Or maybe if you like this model, you enjoy this model, ask the artist and be like, hey, can I commission from you an original model? That's obviously that's mine. That takes inspiration from the 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 Fillion one, the free you know this free booth Fillion one. There's so many like ways that they could have gone about it with respecting the artist, and I think it's honestly absolutely disgusting that one of the biggest features on the platform, like you know, or one of the biggest features in general, shows such a disregard and disrespect for an artist. And for original creator, I think it's disgusting. I think it's absolutely disgusting and inexcusable because in the sense of, like, think about how much money she has made from merch that this artist who owns the copyright, like, honestly deserves because they are making, you know, m figures and they are making your know, art pieces from this person's work and this person's art that they're getting absolutely zero dollars from. Like how much money that they rightfully deserve and they rightfully should have that Fillion is essentially stealing from. Because if you do not own this model, if you do not own this piece of art, that it's not yours. You are profiting off of somebody else's work because you don't own the model. And that is fucking disgusting. Like, I have nothing against Fillion personally. I I have, you know, but that is fucking disgusting. That's absolutely disgusting behavior. We never paid money for the model. Wow, 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 wow. And one merch event would expose a large tirade of negligence that could have ended far worse for her because she basically got caught stealing. She could have gotten fucking sued, honestly. I don't know, or some shit. Enter two parties. Party one, Good Smile Company. Good Smile is a Japanese manufacturer company that focuses on hobby products like sets, acrylics, and figures. I love Good Most Smile. Most notably though, Nendoroid. And if you remember my VTuber love merch video Nendroids. and how I feel about Nendoroid, they're pretty damn good. I love and on July 4th, they would announce a Fillion Nendoroid. This was expectedly a huge deal. Yes. Uh oh, Fillion it's states quote retreating the post. Massive before, deal. Uh oh, we never got permission from their original Mar. Uh, 
Jungo, the original creator of Fillion's character model, which has never been credited properly, did not give Fillion permission for any of the merch he's decided to produce. They were only informed after. Damn, that's crazy that they didn't know. That is so fucking sad. Um, because they didn't know the other instances as well. Other artists for shit like this. Enter party two, Jingo. Jingo is a Japanese VR chat artist that sells pre-made models at an affordable price. A good parallel being those pre-made models aspiring VTubers may buy from Etsy. They also sell a pay-to-use model. Yeah, so um, this is what I have, right? So a century, right? Um, what Fillion basically did is if me. Zenpai, you know, me Zen, Zenigin, me Zen. If I was to make merch of me, whatever it is, I don't know, plaster myself on a t shirt and I sell it to you guys as merch, I cannot do that because I do not own the rights to this design. I do not own the rights to this model. I have paid a uh, amount of money to have the right to make content and to use this model but the you know me paying for this i have you know um decided i like me buying this has like essentially i've made an agreement of the terms of what the the artist for the the booth model that they have stated and you know so because of that I cannot make merchandise from that because it is not my design, it's not my model. I have paid to be able to have the right to use it, but I do not own it, if that makes sense. And that is the same with like, you know, Fillion. You do not have the right to make um, merchandise of it because you do not own it. You are paying to be able to use it of their original character like the terms Ringo, is your, for 7,000. If, if you buy it, you are signing up to the terms of service of that, you know, the, the model. And, oh, put the two models together and look at that. A yeah. toothpick really changes everything. Fillion's model isn't even Fillion's, That's but rather crazy. a recolored version of Jingo's model. An artist on Twitter posted a meme converting Rindo into Fillion's current design in just over three minutes. And if you want to know how easy it what? is to make this 3d design in the billion it is yes that that's easy. fucking crazy there's no world where it's enough to claim as your own or worse sell merch hey y'all come look at this copyright 2024 billion the lie detective determined that was a lie and and honestly okay let's just like say this to a sonic it is really respectable and cool and it shows that you do not need like you know, a uh, $10,000 uh, original model to, like, make it as a VTuber, to make it as a creator. And and in that aspect, in that sense, that is inspiring. That is really cool. But obviously, in this, in, in what she did with that is wrong and is disgusting um, because there is an element of, okay, you've, you've grown with this model you know, if you want to move on from that to making merchandise, from making money from the design, you obviously need to make that your own at that certain point. Um, and I don't know what the fuck it is, if it's laziness, if it's whatever, because she can, okay, obviously, okay, let's just say that she can a hundred fucking percent afford to get a new model. There is no fucking doubt in, in my mind, or there's a doubt in anybody's fucking mind that she can a hundred fucking percent afford to get her own original model. There's no excuse. There's absolutely no fucking excuse. Jingo would have a bit to say regarding this Fillion and Good Smile deal. Quote, This morning, I received many messages about the announcement posted by Good Smile Company about the production of a Nendoroid based on a VTuber who used my Rindo model as a base for their avatar. Since I found out when I was still traveling, it took me a while to figure out what was going on. I did not receive any prior communication from Good Smile Company nor the VTuber in question about the production of this Nendoroid I figure. I don't know because like, is it that... Did, did Good Smell Company just not know? I don't, I don't know. 
I. My point of view, the fact that there was an announcement of plans to professionally produce a figure based on my character, even though I have yet to hear about this, that is very is weird. Very puzzling. Yes, I, I am agree. currently in the process of communicating with Good Smile Company and the VTuber in question, and am awaiting a response. Since this situation involves companies, not just individual people, mm. it will take a bit of time for everything to right. be resolved. Yes. I hope you all can understand this. Please wait for the outcome. Let's do a bit of digging into why this was a big issue for Fillion. First, in Jingo's terms of service, after the purchase yes. of the model. So, yes, so, um, this shows, yes, like when you. You know, I was like, when you buy a, a ready-to-use model on booth or whatever, you there's a terms of service, and you are signing to this terms of service. Um, you are like, you know, you buying it is saying that I accept these terms, I accept this terms of service, and I am agreeing to the terms of what these terms are, right? They permit it for personal use and even video and live streaming use. However, when it comes to tangible goods yeah. like merch, you gotta. Yeah, so so you know, so obviously it's saying that yeah, um, Fillion has all the right to be able to stream and make content with the model, but for tangible goods, for using the model or the design to produce products and to make money from that is not okay. Yeah, that's it. Contact. As you can tell, shit never happened. Second, Jingo isn't the only party that Fillion had had this happen to. What about this Mint model that she used early in her career? She even featured it in racing games and plushie merch. Turns out, this was a refurbished model oh from another God. Japanese VR chat artist by the name of Kamada. <sighs> and they heard about the situation in relation to past merch and relayed that they never gave That's Fillion so permission up. around That's those so items. Fucked up. And if you thought it couldn't get worse, people found some other clips. You are so beautiful. I'm so glad that you like this model that I paid zero dollars for and I'm using for free. Maybe some kind soul gifted it to her? What if I took my VR chat model and I started face tracking with it? So what I did was I, I went and ripped the model from VR chat illegally. I uploaded it into some software that I downloaded off the internet. This is not like a, a ha ha funny moment. Um, That's like kind of... I don't know why she's... Why is she like saying it like proudly like yeah i i i ripped this off on the internet i i have i'm using this completely for free like that's that makes it even fucking worse like and let's just um let's just say this um i paid i paid for this i, I did pay for this okay i did pay for my model okay i i did pay okay i did not like rip it off from somewhere because that's fucked up um you know because i think that you know, if I'm using a model, uh, you know, the artist or the original creator obviously deserves some compensation of some kind. Obviously, um, depends, you know, if some, I don't know, some generous, beautiful artist was just like, hey, you could have this model for free if that's what the artist wants, that's what the creator wants. Oh, yes, that's completely fine. If, like, I don't know, hypothetically, be like, oh, I got this model for free because it was gifted to me by the person that created it obviously completely fine but in this instance you're you're stealing like that's you're stealing like what the fuck that is fucked up like what the fuck because i saw this girl dm video um she recommended um, a software that was uh, I said, okay, that work. was really bad so you can imagine why this was a fucking business nightmare billion had sold thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of merch off models she knew you, were wait does she have a fucking skill sold figure thousands Holy fuck. upon wait thousands of dollars Yo, what the fuck? A 1 to 7 scale figure also? What the fuck? That's fucking crazy. Jeez, what the hell? Worth the merge off models she knew were someone else's, and she went against TOS that's so and disgusting. never reads out that's about so this. Disgusting. All of this plus the ripping of shit, that's just seen as disrespecting artists. Second, yeah, copyright- it's, it's absolutely disrespect, and it is actually really honestly disgusting and sad that this is one of the biggest VTubers in the world who, like, and, and they and they do this. I think it shows uh, a disrespect to the medium, honestly, as a whole, because, um, you know, artists go hand in hand with VTubing, and for one of the biggest VTubers to so, show such a disrespect and disregard for artists, I think it's disgusting. I think it's absolutely disgusting behavior, honestly.
direct infringement. That is a crime, especially in commercial merchandising situations. We are now in legal territory. Do you understand how seriously yes, the you Japanese can get takes fucking copyright? Sued. You, think it's a game? you think it's a you can get game? fucked get legally. You avoid that altogether. Good Smile saw the giant controversy underway yeah, like, and deleted the yeah, announcement like, right fuck, after. I get out of this. Uh oh, shit. yeah. Uh oh, indeed, man. This is a bad situation. Some of y'all may know of the VTuber Neurosama, the doll 987's AI VTuber that blew up in 2023 due to its prompts creating. Oh, is it because um this is it because our model is just like the it's like it's just like the VTube Studio model, right? and engaging responses with the stream. I don't know. At first, Nurosama's model was Mamose Hiyori, a default model yeah. in YouTube Studio. But once business became a foresight, Vidal commissioned VTuber Annie for yeah, a transformative which is, redesign. Makes this sense. helped breed new light in Nurosama and gave her her own base avatar while effectively avoiding potential yeah, legal liability. Which is what Fillion should have fucking done, but... Commercial and merchandising operations. But that's the go-to path. And for the fourth biggest VTuber in the world to let a massive screw-up like this yes, happen is just... That, that is what Fillion what that's what Fillion should have done like literally that's what she should have done it's not that fucking hard that's what you should have done and and that is what you should do respectfully not good like as a brand there's no excuse you can make for this you gotta commission your own shit at yes. this point and you've had years to work this what dilemma years to do as a result, it thousands upon thousands has been gained off of something you don't own the jingo know oh, about that? i don't even know if it's thousands of thousands it, it's probably tens of thousands the merch items before this? Her clips claiming she ripped the model? It's just, it gets very bad. Billion would make a short response about the situation on her stream. So real quick chat, um, what is it real quick? So I've been talking to the artists behind the scenes. I don't know if you guys saw her tweet like yesterday, but we're gonna get on a proceeding in a way that like protects her rights and you know, it's complying with the EUA, the, the EUA. So I'll let you know when there's an update. But with that being said, chat. And Ringo after all- I don't, honestly, I don't know. Um, It's like, okay, yeah, it's great in the sense of it, this gets handled. It's it's good that she talks to the artist but i don't think there's an ex like it's it's i don't know i feel like it, it there's no excuse in the sense of that it shouldn't have taken this wrong long and there's also that thing of like okay if fillion never would have gotten called out would she have ever done that would she have ever contacted the original artist no and that's what makes it fucked up is that it shouldn't have taken this to happen for her to contact the original artist and that shows a complete disregard for it and it shows that she doesn't fucking care because if she actually did fucking care she would have contacted Jungo years ago or she would have redesigned the fucking model um you know when this is the thing when controversy pushes you to take an action um, you should have obviously done or you should have been aware of for a long time you never did it that to me shows that you don't fucking actually care um and that you're only doing it because you're being pushed to do it and because it is hurting your brand that's why she's doing it that it, it completely shows that conversations would have their final say on supposedly proceeding. With Jingo's rights, they permit anyone using the model for anything, including indie VTuber activities. However, just because they purchase a booth model doesn't mean they own it. You're yes. effectively renting it. Yes. Moreover, any usage of her yeah. model in a- Yes, yes. It's essentially like you're you're renting it. It's like you're you're renting it as in you're renting it to like be able to use the stream and like, you know, I'm renting mine to be able to make my videos. You know, but I don't own this model. This is not my model, you know. And um, whenever anybody asks me, I do emphasize that. And I want to emphasize to you guys, I do not own this model. I, I'm renting this model. I bought, I purchased, I paid money to have the right to be able to use this model to make content with. But I do not own the model. This is something that I'm using to hopefully one day level up to then having my own model being made, you know?
A highly profitable or commercial sense, like production of goods, requires notification in advance, and if one isn't an indie VTuber or from an agency, they have to reach out about the model's usage. Most notably, quote, The part of this that I took issue with was that even though the VTuber did not own the copyright to the character, they proceeded with the project and formed a contract with the company without notifying the yes, original creator disgusting. of the character in question. As follows, I have requested that the production schedule for this character merchandising product be stopped altogether. I am not after any royal or other financial incentives. I simply wish to protect the copyright of my characters. To allow this, such as through the sale of copyright licenses, would mean that every character derived from my model would have its own copyright. And as a result, those who use the same models as bases may and become in some fucking mm, copyright disputes. Yeah. They end off reiterating that their booth might- I really do respect um, the fact that they're like, you know, this is not a money thing, but it's just in the sense of we need to protect the rights of artists and, you know, condemn this kind of behavior because in the sense of, you know, artists deserve fucking money that they are rightfully, um, you know, that, that they're rightfully owned, you know, it, like you can't, can't just let people take advantage of artists like this. And to, you know, because rightfully so, Jingo own, like, is entitled to some of the profits, 100 fucking percent, or basically all the profits from the products. It's, it's their, it's their model, it's their design. But I do respect their saying, like, this is a model thing, this is just, like, intangible to my rights as the artist, as the person that owns the model. But it's in the sense of, like, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong when um somebody is, like, are you going to, to a certain extent, this is a money thing, because, you know, people need money to live fucking understandable and Fillion essentially is stealing money from this person has stolen money from this person in a sense and it's disgusting it's fucking disgusting models are for everyone not just one person and as long as the design is not completely one's own no matter how many changes they make to it the copyright is non-negotiable because traces of the original author will still remain so given yes. the entire situation because the thing is right i can i could essentially use the like it's not essentially i could be using the philian model right now you know it's not hers and that's that's what they say booth models are for everyone that's how it is it's like you don't own it. It's not yours. And it was to the point where I thought Fillion's model was hers. And it's like, oh. That's why I said the- I mean, also, like, I don't know, actually, also, um, has Fillion ever actually, like, made any, like, in clips? Um, and when she's streaming, has she, like, actually stated that, like, okay, hey, this is not my model? Because um, you know, there's there's some people in the comments. On, honestly, in my videos, right? I've I've got some people on t um Discord who have DM'd me, and thank you to those people, like um nice people, you know, being like, hey, uh, this feature is stealing your model. These are the same model as you, and you know, I always um emphasize like, hey, this this is not my model. This is a booth model that everyone anybody can use if any of you guys like my model and you want to be a creator you want to be a vtuber um i i link i have dg studio in the description you can use the model go ahead go and if you pay on booth to use the model that i'm using right now you can use it and it's a great gateway for you to try doing vtubing by all means go ahead and do that and I always will emphasize that because it's on my model. I don't own this model. And I don't know if Fillion has ever actually, I don't know if Fillion does that or emphasizes that because um, I don't think I've ever seen a clip where she talks about the model not being hers, you know? the beginning, shit could have gone a lot worse for Fillion, because there's now money involved. Afterwards, the Fillion Good Smile project was effectively suspended. Fillion Co., her merch website that she had announced in the past, is completely empty now, Just with further merch bad. plans being unknown. Remember that manager tweet she made? Yeah, that's gone too. And I can't really find any further statements or apologies regarding the matter. She just kind of moved on. So was this an honest mistake or gross negligence? Uh, gross negligence come to your own conclusion but regardless that shit's on her i'm sorry i'm sorry i i don't think it's an honest mistake um the fact that she basically prejudiced the model in the beginning i think it it shows a disregard i i i know that you know stay neutral whatever um you know 
in a lot of situations, I will, and I would say come to your own conclusions. But in this instance, I wholeheartedly believe that this is way more gross negligence. This is a disregard for the artist um, because there is way too many years, years of chances, um, steps where there should have been a form of communication with the original artist or Fillion being able to do something. Um, and also the fact that she fucking prejudiced the model in the beginning and didn't even pay for it, apparently on Booth, shows a complete disregard, a, a disregard to the original artist. There's that other artist and I didn't see a further response from them. Of course, don't harass, attack, or be dicks to anybody. Yes, not say it, yes, and of course never do that, please. Here. But another question. Will Fillion be getting a new model? If she wants to do merch again, she has to. But hey, if you can joke about breaking that much VR equipment, you definitely got the money to get your own model. Yes, yes, literally she fucking does. Not be ripping shit. Before we end the video and all this drama, let's have a moment. Have you ever heard this phrase before when it comes to art? Nothing is original anymore. Let me explain. Due to human history dating back for a damn long time, unless it's a completely new invention, someone somewhere on this planet we call Earth has sparked a product, service, or idea. Because everything is built on pre-existing resources from before. Therefore, nothing is original. But as American writer Austin Kleon explains, all creative work builds on what came before. Mm, Every new idea yes, is just a remix yes, of two yes. previous ideas. Hell, he even made a book titled How to Steal Like an Artist because that's what artists do. They take things but emulate it in their own personal style. Yes. It's, yes, it, it, it's creating something of your own from something, something else. something original is by making your own new and curious yes. combinations. Let's make it very clear. The VTubing industry is oversaturated as all hell. Oh, there are oh, it's oversaturated as fuck. Hundreds of talented creators who may have a similar attribute to someone who came before or is more popular. And I'm not really a fan of no names putting down others' creative work for- Yeah, 100%. Simply being a similar identity, coincidence, or having inspiration. But there's a clear difference between inspiration and straight up. Y beauty. Yes, there is a line between that 100%. Link shit. Some may say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, but sometimes it's the sincerest way of getting caught in 4K. How did they get to it? that's on you. Ultimately, if you want to become a creator at all, don't let any of this discourage you. Mm -hmm. Take the knowledge from mm -hmm. before and stride, mm -hmm. learn from references, and be the best creator you can be. Just have a bit of authenticity. Yeah. But hey, I seem to really love copying my Oshi Cory X Kenshin. What the hell are you talking about? Making a video and then disappearing for months. Oh, bruh. 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 That's gonna go crazy. I mean, I, hey, I mean, man, he makes really great high quality videos, so understandable why he leaves for common ones. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, that was a, a really great video. Um, you know, definitely do go. I, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, definitely do go and check out Torito. Um, please do consider hitting that subscribe button if you did enjoy this video. Let me know what you guys uh, think. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you'd like to see more VTubing later videos in the future, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. So, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.